next Wednesday. It's like the most awesome hour of television ever. Everyone on this island has something to hide. Every man's entitled to his secrets. But when the truth comes out... They were working with the others. Someone ends up dead. You gonna tell Jen? No. Why not? Because then we'd have to dig another grave. An all-new Lost next Wednesday. Razzle Dazzle! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a very special podcast. This is the podcast in which we talk about all of your favorite television series from yesteryear and then discuss them over a glass of wine. I'm your host, Patrick M. Dunn, as always, and I'm joined here by Kat Halstead, the author. I am doing super fabulous today because I love the show we are going to discuss. Yes. It is a series that is ranked highly in my top 10 television shows of all time. Yes, same here. I'm not sure exactly where in the top 10 I would place it, but it is within that 10 range. If I actually had to number my top 10, I would be screwed. Yes, please promise me you'll never actually ask me to break this list down. Mm -hmm. In case you haven't read the description, we are doing... Lost, the TV series, uh, the acclaimed, wildly popular ABC series that aired from, I believe, 2004 to 2010-ish? Yeah, that sounds about right. Unless you have been living under a rock, it is mandatory that you know what Lost is. Even if you hated the show, you still knew it. Yeah, everybody knew. If somebody says, oh, I never watched it, I'm going to say um, BS. You probably watched at least one episode. Or part of an episode. Yeah. Or you knew somebody that watched it, so you heard about it, and you just kind of rolled your eyes at the thought of Lost. Yeah, I was totally the friend that wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> so this was a series produced by Bad Robot, J.G. Uh, Abrams' production. Uh, <clears throat> he previously did Alias. And uh, Felicity. And Felicity, and just some other weird things here and there, like Cloverfield. Yeah, didn't he do... Um... Some of those Marvel movies? No, he did uh, Star Trek. Oh, he did Star Trek. Yes. Uh, so this was a show, uh, it had a very plotted storyline, which involved a number of castaways who, there's a plane crash somewhere over the Pacific. They're flying from Sydney to LA. The plane crashes. Uh, you have two sets of survivors that are on different parts of the island. Mm -hmm. The story basically talks about how those two tribes are brought back together and deal with all the other crazy shit that is going on in the island as well. Yeah, because it's not just your normal island. It is like the most twisted island ever. And a whole other force of people that live there? Yes, the others. The others. There are monsters. There's this weird godlike figure who lives on the island. There's another devil-like figure who lives on the island. There is time travel involved in this show. There's time travel. The island actually moves. And apparently this island can control the fate of the entire planet. Yes. This island, the island controls everything. If that is a lot to take in. Keep in mind, we are going to bottle this down to one specific episode. Although it takes place in this crazy, convoluted universe, it's really kind of like a one-off adventure. It really is. Yes, so the episode we are doing is called Exposé. It's a season three episode. It's episode 14 of season three. Yes. In the long run, it is considered a bad episode. It got very uh, mixed critical responses. It's pretty much considered one of the absolute worst, if not the worst episode. The third season of Lost was very rough around the edges, I would say. Well, the third season, you're still like this, but there's still this popular thing that everybody is still a little excited about. But there's a little fatigue over like the whole mystery 
And it's not even getting, this is before it's like super, super complicated. This is before you know about the time travel, before you know about the island moving, the frozen donkey wheel. As viewers at this point in time, season three, we were lost when it came to Lost. Uh, We know just as much as the castaways do at this point. Yes. The first season kind of went with this really great format. Each episode would focus on flashbacks involving one character, or sometimes two, if you had a Sun and Jin episode. Or even maybe a Sharon and Boone episode. However, by the time the second season rolled around, the flashbacks started to get very tedious. Mm -hmm. The show was introducing a lot of mysterious concepts, and then moving on to a whole other topic, just leaving... Yeah, there was a lot of little breadcrumbs around, and you didn't know which way you were supposed to follow. ABC decided to do this thing where they were going to split the season, I guess, in half. So you got maybe six or seven... You got... It was like the start of a fall finale, I I would Mm -hmm. say. And the show aired at a later time, I believe, in its third season. It was 10 p.m. Yes, I remember I had to stay up extra late to watch Lost because I would go to bed so early because of my job would start so early in the day and did you struggle to stay awake i'd be like okay it's wednesday night this is like my night to stay up an extra hour (laughs) and well season two they they tried to air it as a normal series where you would get four episodes maybe a week or two off then two episodes and a few weeks off yeah and it angered a lot of fans lost is the show the kind of show that you have to watch in one swoop really yeah you gotta just like power through it if you have short breaks in the flow of the show you start to forget a lot of things and lost is a show that the devoted fans needed want and wanted to remember all these little details so by the time the third season rolled around they they tried this new thing where we're gonna just do the fall season then we're gonna come back in the winter ish time yeah like late winter right before spring That way we can have, you know, zero weeks off in between episodes. Just do it all at once. You know, which is totally normal now. Yes, which is a normal thing now. And I think, like, Lost was really the first show they did that with. Yes. However, the third season kind of opened up very lackluster. Mm Mm-hmm. This was the point where it was basically eight weeks of Jack, Sawyer, and Kate trapped in cages. Yes. For... Long periods of time. Like this, like eight episodes straight. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And the flashbacks were starting to become very tedious as well. Uh, you had the Biling episode where... Oh my god, which is, in my opinion, the absolute worst episode. Oh yes, if we come down to horrible episodes, it's the episode with Biling, who was an Asian actress, who I guess she was tapped as, at one point in time, supposed to be like the next big thing. Yeah, I, I never understood it. Like, I was not impressed with her in this episode at all. And nothing ever became of her career, really, after this lost episode. She just kind of faded away. She might pop up on a thing here or there. Yeah. But the episode involved her and Jack, and it was a story of how Jack got his tattoos, which was a mystery no one needed to know. <laughs> yeah, we didn't need to know that. And there was that awful other who kept saying who kept asking him, do you know what your tattoo says? And he's like, he finally he looks at her and he goes, I know what my tattoo means. Or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, and I remember when ABC was promoting the episode, the, the voiceover was like, and next week we will reveal Jack's biggest secret. <laughs> and it was really what his tattoo meant, <laughs> which I do not even remember what the tattoo means. It was about not being... Not belonging. Not being one of us. You did such a great job explaining that tattoo meeting. (laughs) Yeah, I know I did. That's how ridiculous that episode was. (laughs) So one thing that I feel like the expose episode does is it it's a bridge between the shitty episodes of season three lost to where the episodes really start to pick up again. Yeah, where things actually start to like move. Because this is about the point where they get the, um, that three season pickup, where they get the final end date. They decided to make Lost a six season series, Mm -hmm. and they shortened the episodes each year, which I thought was a good move, only because then you don't get these filler episodes like Jack gets his tattoos. 
<laughs> yeah. And they start to abandon the flashback format. They they go to the flash forward. Oh my god, when they revealed it was a flash forward, my mind flew. But before we get to that point, there is expose. Expose. The 14th episode of Lost, which focuses on the characters of Nikki and Paolo. They were yes. two castaways who apparently have been on the island all along. However, we never knew of their existence until season three. <laughs> okay, I do feel like we might have seen Paolo in some earlier episodes, like season two or something. I highly doubt that because the actor who played Paolo is, he's like the Brazilian Tom Cruise. <laughs> he's the Brazilian Tom Cruise. Yes, he is a big Brazilian actor. Uh, when Lost hired him to play the role of Apollo, I remember there was a big press release about how they landed him. I was living without the internet at the time. Okay. Um, I mean, it's possible there could have been a Apollo esque looking guy. There might have been someone who looks a lot like him, yes. Yes, because a lot of the background characters, they used the same actors. Mm-hmm. And then there was an episode, I think it's somewhere in season four or five, where they just killed them all off in mass. Yeah, they just killed off a bunch of, of the so-called red shirts. Only because they started doing that weird time jump thing, the time travel, and they just didn't need those characters anymore. Yeah, you don't need like these the random guy from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia anymore. Yes, so they wanted the audience to not ask whatever happened to those people, so they just found a way to kill him off they just like get blown up or kidnapped by the others yeah there was wasn't there some kind of siege on the on the lost village yeah i think the others came and took a bunch of them away during the the first season of the show the writers they had this idea where they wanted to always have these characters that were in the background eventually as they start killing off main characters they just want to bring other characters to the forefront yeah want to kind of just have this extra flow of characters so that's why they brought in nikki and paulo however the way they shoehorned them into the series in the third season like they were always part of the gang like they were just all of a sudden always there always involved with what Locke was doing because jack kate and Sawyer were gone so like Locke's in charge they're always just there it's like who are these people uh Locke was leading this expedition to the Pearl Station. Mm -hmm. And he's like, who wants to come? And Nikki's like, oh, I'll come. Like, who the hell are you, girl? Like, where'd you come from? Hurley apparently has known these people this whole time, but Sawyer, but Sawyer's like, who the hell's Nikki? Who the hell's Paula? Like, who are these people? (laughs) Sawyer is my absolute favorite in this. He's just like, who the hell is Nikki? Who the hell is Paula? Like, who are these people? Like, Sawyer's like the voice of the audience. Who are you people? Like, just, Away. You're not part of our group. The writers then decided, you know what? It's time we give Nikki and Paulo a send off. And the best way to do it is by giving them their own episode. Well, you might as well explain who these people were. Yes. So you get a very interesting flashback story for these characters, mm-hmm. which simultaneously leads to their demise. Yes. Uh, so. The reason why the show is called Exposé is because Nikki, the character of Nikki, uh, she is an actress? or Yeah, she's an actress. Well, she's really some kind of murderer slash con artist slash thief. Yeah. Who pretends she's an actress to get on this television series, Exposé, so that way she can rob these diamonds from the series creator. Yeah. And so Exposé, Hurley describes it as like Baywatch, but only better. Yeah, that's how Hurley describes it. However, I would think it's more like Pamela Anderson's other show, VIP. Yes. Yes, that's totally what it would be like. But I think a lot of people probably don't remember VIP, so they Mm -hmm. went with Baywatch as... Yeah, well, it's totally the kind of, it looked like the kind of show that probably has that following. It was syndicated, and it probably ended up on most um, affiliates late at night. Yes, it was definitely a syndicated show. It was very Charlie's Angels-esque. Yes. That it involved strippers who solve crimes. Yeah. And the 
character of Nikki, uh, she pretends that she's an actress. She becomes the guest star on this one specific episode where I guess she is playing like the red shirt of this crime stop and stripper group. And she's she's dancing in the club, kind of dancing along to some Rex and FX music. Uh, Rump Shaker, I believe, is the song that's playing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nikki's character's name is Corvette in this episode. Because of course. And there is... A very Steven Seagalish looking guy with a ponytail and a briefcase comes into this club. Yes, because that's totally what they do. And Corvette slash Nikki, she's on the stage, like stripping in front of men and a few women. She she watches the Steven Seagal guy go into like a back office. So she immediately exits the stage. She throws in like a trench coat. Yes, because there's always a trench coat laying around. Make herself look a little modest. She goes into the back office. And she discovers that Steven Seagal is working with Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Billy D. Williams is supposed to be like the Charlie of, from Charlie's Angels. Yes. But it also turns out that he's the bad guy. The Cobra is his name. Yes, he's the Cobra. <gasps> and I guess the Cobra is funneling money. Stealing money from like children's orphanages or charities or something. Yes. Uh, Corvette's line in this episode, she goes, that's the money for the orphanage. Yeah. And... The Cobra just shoots her down. Yeah, she's dead. And that's when Autumn and Crystal, the other uh, expose ets, yes, they come busting into the room. They see Corvette dead. However, Billy D. Williams, he does not want to blow his cover, so he announces to them that Corvette was working for the Cobra this whole time. Mm-hmm. And these girls believe him. Well, they have no reason not to believe him, really. We Then we get kind of like a cut, like, cut! And you see the director, and he's like, that's a wrap for Corvette. And the director guy is kind of like, you know what, we want to bring you back next season. But she's like, but, I'm, but I've been shot. And he's like, you could have been wearing a bulletproof vest. And, and she, like, really, like, flashes. She, like, throws open the trench coat. <laughs> she throws open the trench coat. She's just wearing, like, a bra. And the director's like, you could have had bulletproof breasts. <laughs> yes, because that's totally a thing. Uh, Nikki then says to the director, who also happens to be her boyfriend. Yeah, Look, and he's like super old. Super old. And his name's Howard. I remember that for some reason. Yeah. And she just says, look, I'm just a guest star. We all know what happens to guest stars. Foreshadowing Nikki's eventual demise on the Lost Island. Woo! And this is where we kind of cut over to the island. Mm-hmm. And Nikki is frantically digging. Because... Why does Nikki do anything? We don't know, because we don't know who the hell Nikki is now. Yeah, we just know she's an actress who is dating an old guy. She's frantically digging. She throws in some item, covers it back up with dirt. She runs out to the beach. Mm-hmm. She s- sees uh, Sawyer and Hurley comfortably playing ping pong. Before we get to all right, so they're just playing <laughs> ping pong. Jack is still missing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The others are kidnapping people left and right. <laughs> like, all crazy. Okay, let's just play some ping pong. Just, like, you know, let's just play ping pong and just chill. Okay, let's be fair. You know, Sawyer just got released by the others. He kind of needs to unwind. You know, that's probably what it is. It's just, like, Sawyer trying to, like, get the nightmare of the cage and the fish biscuits out of his mind. I don't know. I feel like you'd want to... Ca- Your life is in danger. <laughs> You probably want to come back, give some kind of inspiring Jack-like speech, rally the troops, go back to the island, rescue Jack, so that way you have your doctor back, (laughs) and maybe take out the others or uh, do some significant damage to them. I mean, especially consider Sawyer's got all the guns. He has one gun or all the guns? I I think he has all the guns. I think he's, like, got them hidden somewhere. Okay. He found the gun cache. Yeah, he found, like, a gun supply. Yes, so they're just sitting there playing ping pong on the island, on the beach, when out of the jungle emerges Nikki. Mm -hmm. And she, she's about to pass out, but she says something very incoherent, which it could be power lines, it could be plywood, it could be Paulo lies. That's what they believe he says. And Sawyer's kind of trying to like figure out what his you know next move we need to like wake up nikki or whatever Mm -hmm. and he's like nikki's dead and sawyer says who the hell's nikki (laughs) 
<laughs> well, it's Paulo lies. Who the hell is Paulo? Yeah, who's Paula? Who's Nikki? And he gets their name wrong over and over again. Yes. We then cut back to 84 days ago. Yes. Expose has wrapped up. Wrapped up their filming for the week or season or however the series was going at this point in time. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking a season. Nikki and Howard are just kind of chilling in the kitchen. They're eating their food. They're having their breakfast. They've got this new chef this preparing food. Amazing new chef. Uh... Howard says that Paulo is the Wolfgang Puck of Brazil, just like Rodrigo Santoro is the Tom Cruise of Brazil in real life. <laughs> Howard decides he wants to propose to, to Nikki, but he didn't buy her a ring. He bought her a bracelet. Instead, like a friendship bracelet that he hides behind bread rolls. Yeah, because that's super romantic. Howard's been married before. He's now just a lonely old man. He meets this fox, Nikki. He gets her into the acting world. Well, and she's willing to roll around with him, so... She was only willing to roll around with him for one reason. Well, yeah, but he doesn't know that. His diamonds. <laughs> because... Diamonds. Apparently, Nikki and Paulo are in cahoots with each other. But of course. And they poison Howie. Poor Howard. He didn't deserve this. That guy had no chance. He had zero chance of getting through this episode. Poor guy. He just, like thought this hot young thing wanted him and no no he dies he's wearing the key to a safe around his neck yes because that's totally where i keep the key to my safe he but again i keep my safe door wide open i feel like she could have gotten that key to the safe without killing him though yeah probably but yeah why did they get they didn't have to kill him like he could have just taken i'm like does he wear it in the shower because the key's gonna rust Nikki could have gone into the bathroom and taken a shower with Howard to distract him, and Paula could have slipped in and grabbed the key. There's all other kind of ways that they could have gotten the key. Yeah. They decide murder is the easiest way. I I don't even know how they poisoned him or with what, but it was apparently undetectable. An undetectable poison in his food that the other one, that Nikki also had to eat. Howard hides the diamonds in these Russian nesting dolls inside a safe. Because that's not weird at all to open your safe and there's a bunch of Russian nesting dolls. It's almost like a safe within a safe. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like they had to be very artistic there, though, for some reason. And just let's do it that way. Yeah, I guess so. They they don't show the diamonds right away, though. We just know there's something valuable inside there. Yeah, we just know there's like this little thing of something that she's after. Um, But there's a very significant moment here that kind of leads to the rest of the episode. Paulo almost lights up a cigarette when they're in the safe room. Yeah. And Nikki's like, don't do that. You're going to leave ashes (laughs) on the floor. And the police are going to find the ashes and be like, why are there ashes in this room? That's what Jessica Fletcher is for. If Jessica Fletcher and Lost existed in the same universe, I'm sure Jessica Fletcher would have found her way to Howard's fancy Sydney, Australia mansion, only because she seems to know all these crazy rich people. Yes. And she'd be there just in time for a murder. Howard probably would have asked her to be like a consultant on Expose. Mm Mm-hmm. And he would have invited her to Australia for the filming. Oh, of course. She would have just been chilling around the set one day and probably would have picked up on some strange nervous tick that Nikki would have made. Oh, yeah. Jessica would have been like, oh, the way that girl gazed off into space whenever Howard told her he loved her? Did just not seem natural to me. Yeah, she would have had, like, Nikki Pegg. She would have been like, oh, so Nikki shows up, and then this guy shows up? Hmm, I bet they're off to Rio de Janeiro together. Because that is where Paula's from, and that's where all criminals go after they commit some devious act. Yes. We then cut back to the island, and the non-kidnapped members, uh, so you got Sun, Jin, Charlie... Sawyer and Hurley, they're all studying the the body, trying yeah. to figure out what's going on. And I believe this is where Hurley says that he believes Nikki said Paulo lies. And I think this is where Sawyer says, who the hell's Paulo? Yeah, I think so. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention on, on one of the flashbacks. So they are reading Howard's obituary. Mm-hmm. And the obituary says that he died of heart failure. Yeah. So they say that he's the creator of Expose. And two other shows, Strike Team Alpha 
and Dr. Kincaid Esquire. Oh, really? Which is just two other shows I just want to know about. (laughs) I need to know more, especially about Dr. Kincaid Esquire. Yes, and I was reading the Wikipedia entry for Exposé. Uh-huh. Whenever the writing staff got bored, or mm-hmm. they had like a hard time trying to figure out what to do with an episode, they used to just make up Exposé plot lines. God. And I guess over the course of the three years after this episode, they mm-hmm. came up with, they said, at least a full season of Exposé episodes. Oh my God, that is terrifying. We definitely need to... St- kickstart expose of the series yes totally we need to get these ideas into light i need some good late night tv so as nikki and paulo are reading the obituary they're in the sydney airport at this point in time they're yeah they're at to... the airport because everybody starts to run into each other at the airport really yes yeah, so you have to have these background characters so we get the return of shannon and boone I get so excited whenever Boone shows up. They seem, well, Boone seemed like he was going to be an important character in the first season. Yeah. Boone was really important. He was, like, always there. He was with Locke. He was always, like, involved in stuff. And then, and then the tragedy happened. He dies. Then. I'm still not over it. A few episodes later in the second season, uh, we then lose Shannon. The two actors were always willing to come back just to do these dumb appearances. And the show was filmed in Hawaii, so it, they were very committed to the idea of flying to Hawaii and just filming probably about 15 seconds of dialogue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. If you had the chance to just go to Hawaii for a couple days... Oh, yes. You only have to work, like, maybe one or two days. Probably not even. Probably yeah. Just a day, and then you got, like, a week's vacation out of this. Exactly. And Shannon and Boone, they're fighting in the airport. Because that's what they do. Yes. Uh, Pre-Island, Shannon was just the biggest lunatic. She was awful. She was so spoiled and bitchy. And they were brother and sister, but they were not blood brother and sister. They were like stepbrother and stepsister, but they like grew up together or something. But- they had an implied relationship. Yeah, there was like, Boone had a crush on Shannon, and it was just, ugh. It got really weird, but it's funny that Nikki and Paolo just assumed that they were together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Nikki just says to Paolo, promise me we'll never end up like those two. Which <laughs> seriously foreshadows the way that Nikki turns into Shannon on the island, basically. Yes! She becomes obsessed with the diamonds, What happens is the plane crashes, obviously. Obviously. (laughs) We now get these reshot pilot scenes with Nikki and Paolo now included. Yes, but of course you have to have the Shannon screaming part every time we flash back to this. Yes, so there's Shannon screaming on the beach. The plane's down. She doesn't know what the hell's going on. Everyone's frantically running around. And you get some of those like iconic shots where they do the long shot of the plane fuselage. Yeah. now they have Nikki, like, superimposed in it. And you're just kind of like, no, she's she has not been there all along. <laughs> exactly. We're like, we know this bitch wasn't here. <laughs> then she did not exist. You have Boone running up to Nikki or Paul, I forget who. I think Nikki, asking Nikki if she has a pen, which is back to that whole thing where Jack asked Boone to find a pen for some reason, I think, to yeah. fix someone. For the tracheotomy. Like or something. Yes. And Nikki finds... Paulo, he's in shock. Like, he almost just died. He's covered in blood. He somehow survived this horrific plane crash. Yeah. And the first thing Nikki says to him is, where's the bag? Yeah, she's so freaking obsessed about these stupid diamonds. And he's just like, oh my god, thank god we're alive. He's not even like, thank god we're alive. Nikki is awful. He's he's hyperventilating. (laughs) Well, I think he does eventually, like, when he snaps out of it, he's like, oh, we're Mm. alive, thank god. And she's just like... Where are the diamonds? Where's the bag? And he doesn't even answer her right away. He's just kind of still in shock. He doesn't... Yeah. He's like, who cares about the diamonds? I I could have been killed. I could yeah, be... We should be dead right now. Yeah. I could be missing limbs. Like, all kinds of crazy. I could be badly burned. But no, I'm standing on this island. You don't... They don't even know where they are at this point. They, yeah, they have no clue where they are. They don't understand what happened. Like, one minute, they're in this flight back from Australia, and the next... They're like on a beach screaming. They don't know if it's Hawaii. They, they don't know the Philippines. It could be a, a numerous number of islands. Exactly. <laughs> now we cut back to 
the castaways, uh, they're now searching for Paulo's body because Hurley suggested Paulo lies. We need mm-hmm. to find Paulo. Um, they see the body, and Sawyer says, I'm guessing that's Paulo. Sawyer, I love Sawyer. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> and I think Jin's like, why is his pants undone? And why is his shoe in the tree? I think and Hurley it's... asked, because Jin barely speaks English at this point. Okay. It, it, somebody asks it. Jin finds a bottle of water next to Paula's body, and he's about mm-hmm. to take a sip from it. Sawyer sees it. He grabs the bottle, and he pours it out because yeah. he suspects that Paulo and Nikki may have been poisoned. Hurley mm-hmm. freaks out. He's like, why are you emptying out the water? He's like, you're messing up the crime scene. And Sawyer is being realistic. He's like, crime scene? <laughs> There's no forensic hatch nearby. He's like, we're just people <laughs> lost on an island. <laughs> Sawyer's just like, do you not understand what's going on? Are they going to break out the fingerprinting kit and that whole like CSI computer that can detect any kind of poisons in the bottle of water? <laughs> exactly. Uh, We're just going there... by what we can do. <laughs> However, if MacGyver was there, he'd find a way to test the water for the water. Poison. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Heck, if they had if they had rescued Jack, I'm sure Jack could have excuse me, figured out what they were doing or what happened to them by now. Jack is a man of science, not a man of faith. He could have, I guess, done a little... He could be a forensic scientist in a way, I imagine, right? Yeah, I mean, he's the doctor. He'd figure it out. He'd, he'd solve the crime. Um, speaking of MacGyver, I know that CBS is doing a MacGyver reboot. Yeah. Sawyer would definitely be a great candidate for a new MacGyver. Josh Holloway? Oh my god, yes. But he's on some, like, USA alien show or something. Colony? Yeah. Which I have not seen, but... I watched the pilot because it was, like, free... Well, it was supposed to be free on iTunes. I still got charged. And it was awful. I got a migraine watching it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit through it. And there's this point where he's... um, His character, like, drops an egg on the floor. And you're like, it's Josh Holloway. He's gonna say, son of a bitch. And he does it, and it felt so empty. Oh, I love when they reference actors' previous lines or catchphrases in Mm -hmm. other episodes of television series or other TV series. Like, oh, it was set up so perfectly for that, and they didn't do it. I'm like, oh, you people suck. Do you think maybe it was originally there, and then they decided not to go that route? I don't know. I kind of think it it was. Because USA television series are not that clever or not that smart Mm -hmm. and i feel like the writers of colony probably put that line in there and then usa was just like this line doesn't make sense (laughs) yeah probably cut it out and instead we'll replace it with a commercial for covert affairs (laughs) although one usa show that really surprised me was mr robot mr robot Mr. Robot. It really surprised me how decent of a television series it actually was. Mm-hmm. All right, so now we cut to 75 days ago. Mm-hmm. Nick and Paolo are just kind of, I guess, chilling on the beach. They're trying to figure out what the monster was or yeah. the dinosaur. Well, actually, it's mostly Paolo trying to figure out what the monster or dinosaur is. But Nikki is just like, where the fuck is the luggage? Who cares? About yeah, this she's monster? like, where are my fucking diamonds? Yeah. And at this point, Ethan shows up. He's wearing a Wisconsin University t-shirt. Yes. And he now, he references that he found um, luggage in, like, the other side of the island. Because I guess that's where the plane split in half. Yeah, the plane split in half above the island. So, so the luggage is all over. Nikki now is thinking we need to find this. But before she gets a chance to kind of ask Ethan more about it, Mm -hmm. we now cut to the infamous Jack, if we can't live together, we'll die alone speech. Yes, but one of my favorite lines of the entire series, if we can't live together, we're going to die alone. And you know, the Jack doll actually has like a voice box that comes with it. Because you know how they had dolls for the lost characters? Yes. And um, I have the Jack one, and I have the voice box, and it's that's one of the three lines that it says. What are the other lines? Do you? Have, I don't can remember. You find a pen? <laughs> can you find a pen? <laughs> can you find? No, it's not that. It's like it's definitely stuff from like season one, maybe season two. Oh, they don't have. Oh, maybe have season three. 
I feel like it has to have we have to go back. No, it doesn't have we have to go back. It doesn't have that. That is just as memorable as the live together dial on speech. Yeah, it's definitely made before the we have to go back. So they made Lost Dolls before season three? Yeah. Because, like, my brother gave me the Jack doll for my birthday that year after season three. Wow. All right. So they didn't have the lines recorded yet. No. <laughs> Such a missed opportunity. Totally a missed opportunity. Uh, so now we have the castaways. They now believe that it's probably the monster that did the killing that killed Nina and Pablo, according to Sawyer. But of course. <laughs> He, I he doesn't let up. He continuously does not remember these characters' names. <laughs> he probably never really saw them before. He's not like, who are you people? You just showed up. Are you sure you were on the flight with us? Are you sure you're not others? Yeah, like I feel like. Were you in a uh, hatch somewhere? Like Sawyer doesn't even know some of our other cast member names. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Like, just because you've been here doesn't mean Sawyer knows you. Sawyer's just, like, this guy. He just kind of wants to do his own thing. He's this former con-, con artist. He just wants to sit and read. Like, did Sawyer ever get involved with Shannon and Boone or Rose? Uh, I don't point? think he did. I think the only, like, maybe he was mildly involved with Rose and Bernard when they became others. Yeah, well, in the later seasons when they found Rose and Bernard, like, in the middle of the woods, and Rose and yeah. Bernard were like, oh, shit, it's so weird. Oh, great, you guys are back. Yeah, because there was We've been trying long... to avoid you assholes for the last 20 years. Rose and Bernard disappeared. Yeah. I guess the actors were just no longer available on for the show. Or they yeah. kind of forgot about writing for Rose and Bernard. Well, they, when they had that whole beach siege where they killed off a bunch of the characters... Mm-hmm. Rose and Bernard were never seen again after that. And the, ca- the Castaway Six, or the whatever they referred to as the people who got home, mm-hmm. they went home, and the other main characters were now stuck in time. However, they never ran into Rose or Bernard anywhere, except one episode they happened to meet up again. Yeah, and Rose and Bernard were not happy to see them. No, they just decided, you know what, we're just going to stay on the island, fuck trying to get off this fucking rock, and let's just live our lives. Yeah, they were just like, we're gonna, we're just gonna, like, you know, make a nice little life here. We were about to retire anyways. Yeah. And then you assholes had to show up. Rose was very sick, she was dying, so probably ate up a lot of their 401k money, so they probably Mm -hmm. didn't have much to go back to. Yeah, like, they were desperate for a cure. Like, they went to Australia for, like, some miracle cure or something. Yes, so... They stayed on the island, and are we to assume that Rose and Bernard are the two skeletons, the Adam and Eve skeletons that (gasps) Jack finds at one point in time? Oh, I so bet they are. Somehow Rose and Bernard jumped in time as well. Yeah, because they were on the island, so when the island jumps... They jump. They jump, yeah. And they died in this cave and are found around the same time they just crashed there. Yeah. Do you know who else makes a reappearance in this episode? Who? Who? Uh, in a 57 days ago flashback, Dr. Arts shows up again. Arts! And... You got a little arts on you. We got a little arts action. Uh, Nikki and Arts kind of have this little, uh, sidebar. I feel like this is the most screen time he actually ever got. Yes, and the whole time he was on the show, he gets a lot of airplay in this episode. So, Nikki is looking for information on trajectories, like Mm -hmm. plane trajectories, and she consults with Arts... Yeah. Because she thinks he was a junior high school scientist. He might know about this kind of shit. You would hope so. He kind of does, but he mostly gives Nikki a history in the Medusa spider. Yeah, because he's more into the bugs. Yes, he's into the bugs. He has all these moths and spiders and all these species that he finds. He puts them in jars and he kind of, I don't know, is doing his own thing in the Lost Island. He's like, there's all kinds of cool bugs here. Let's just study them. Why not? That's his thing. Kind of points Nikki and Paulo in maybe the right direction. Mm-hmm. And they end up coming um, across the yellow plane. Yes, the Nigerian plane. The Nigerian plane and the hatch to the Pearl Station, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. The Pearl Station. And they're just like, eh, whatever. Let's not check that out. Well, Paulo wants, well, actually, Nikki wants 
Paulo to go up into the yellow plane, but he will not do it. Uh, said, yeah, that's probably like the smartest thing he could do. Because he says, that plane looks like it's going to fall over, and Nikki's like, that plane's not going to fall over. And it's just kind of hilarious because it does with Boone inside. Boone! <laughs> Nikki is shocked when she finds that Paulo, instead of climbing up to the plane, he is so keen on going into the hatch they find. Yeah. And she's like, what the fuck? You you don't want to climb 100 feet up to the cliff and go into this plane, but you'll go 100 feet into this underground Weird, cavern. Weird, creepy underground thing. You mean kind of like this? In a... In a I think it's right around here where, where Paulo slut shames Nikki for sleeping with Howard here, too. Yeah, he gets really pissy with her about that. Yeah, and I don't know, it's kind of weird. And she's like, I did it for us. But of course. We said there's other ways you can steal that key necklace from Howie. Yeah, there are. We flash back to the castaways now. They're going through Nikki and Paulo's shit. Yeah, they're trying to figure out who the hell these damn people were. Hurley finds the expose script. And Hurley is totally an expose fan. Oh, yeah. He is shocked to find out that Billy D. Williams was the Cobra. I think everybody was probably shocked to find out that Billy D. Williams was the Cobra. So Nikki wrapped up her stint as Corvette on Expose, and the actress would have died in this plane crash. Do you think that they exploited the hell out of her appearance on that episode, like in this, whenever that episode of Expose aired? Oh, at the very least, that episode was dedicated to her. Do you think there would have been a lot of promotion? I'm sure there it? probably would have been like, see the episode with Oceanic A15 victim Nikki Fernandez. It probably would have given the series a boost, I think, a ratings boost. Because... But then who's like in charge of the series with Howard dead? I'm sure there's other, you know, it's not just really one person that runs a TV True. show. And I mean, if this was as big as Baywatch, I'm sure they would have found a replacement. The production company would have took, like, second in command or something. Yeah, probably. They also find walkie-talkies, the others' walkie-talkies in Nikki and Paolo's beach tent. Yeah, they're a little, like, shack. And Sawyer now thinks that Nikki and Paolo are in cahoots with the others. Well, and then Sun thinks it, too. Yes, because Sun keeps bringing up that she was kidnapped by the others. She yeah, she was kidnapped by the others. Okay. The others are really Sawyer and Charlie. Well, it's mostly yeah. Charlie, but Sawyer puts Charlie up to the task. Which makes no sense to me, and I can't remember why. Yes, I for some reason, why Charlie kidnaps Son, it, the reason why escapes me. It's been so long since I've seen that episode. However, Son does find out in this episode that it was Sawyer and Charlie. Because the guilt gets to Charlie and he confesses. Yeah, he's like, I can't live with this burden any longer. Jin, Jin's pretty cool. I mean, Sun's pretty cool with Charlie over this, but... But not with Sawyer. No, she slaps him across the face. <laughs> oh, I love Sun. In her broken English, her perfect <laughs> broken English. <laughs> and we now flash back to 48 days ago, where Nikki overhears... Kate and others, some other castaways, arguing over where they found guns. Oh, yes. I guess they found guns in some, like, lake or lagoon or some kind of body of water. Yeah, body in that lagoon thing, because I think she and Sawyer dove in. Yes, so Sawyer and Kate found, like, a box of guns or something of that nature. Yeah. Uh, Nikki and Paolo head over to that lagoon. Paolo dives in, swims around some dead bodies, and he finds his luggage, but he's been having such a nice time on the island with Nikki that he does not tell her about the suitcase. Nope. He just makes sure he grabs the uh, diamonds and his nicotine gum. Yeah, he swims back under. He Well, he comes up out of the water. Well, actually, Paolo dives into the water. He does like one quick swoop around this gigantic ass lagoon, comes back up, and he's like, nope, didn't see anything down there. There's this entire body of water, and he just looks in one spot and one underwater. Nikki is just so airheaded. She's like, okay, and she just takes off. Yeah, she's just like, fine. Diamonds have to be somewhere else. <laughs> but Paolo goes back underwater, grabs the nicotine gum and mm -hmm. the the Russian nesting dolls. And it's kind of funny that um, Paolo swims around with, like, pants on. Wouldn't that weigh you down from swimming faster? Uh, yeah, I would think so. I mean, you're on an island... Everybody's already seen everything. Just take your pants off so you at least have something dry to put on later. 
Yeah, because they don't have washing machines or dryers. I don't, yeah. Who knows if they have something to change into because everyone always seems to be wearing the same outfit, except for Nikki. She's In every cutscene, she's wearing like a different <laughs> bikini top. Yeah, like she wears, like some of the girls wear different things. Because like if you can find your luggage or you can find clothes that'll fit. Because Kate definitely wears different outfits throughout. One, one thing I always laughed about the show too is they had such nice hair. Yeah, for real. Their hair was always like well coiffed, especially Sawyer. Like his hair is always pampered. Mm hmm. And during the hour of the episode, they always get dirty and muddy and stuff. But Sawyer always has like perfect hair. But by the next episode, they're back to freshly washed hair, pampered. Mm -hmm. Now we cut to 32 days ago, and yeah. Paulo is just kind of chilling on the beach at night. He's digging. I guess he has a little spot just a little bit away from the camp where he hides the diamonds and his nicotine gum, and yeah. Locke sees him, and he's kind of like saying that, you know, nothing ever stays buried on this island for too long. Yeah. The beach is eroding. You should just bury your shit somewhere else. Yep. He, it was just like that Locke stuff. Like, Locke will just walk up to you and say something, and you'll be like, dude, you are creepy. Get away from me. Locke probably knows what Nikki and Paul are up to. Locke kind of had everybody pegged for a while. Locke is the kind of type he would just hide in the bushes and watch everybody. <laughs> yes, he really was. Studying everybody, especially after you had the whole Ethan incident. Mm-hmm. And now you have characters disappearing, Jack's kidnapped, so I feel mm -hmm. like he was always wanting to know what was up with the other islanders. Yeah. Trying to figure out who's really from the flight, who's another. But he, he had his eyes on Nikki and Paolo, and he determined they were safe, but he knows that they have some internal strife between them. Mm -hmm. And he gives Paolo a pointer, you need to hide this shit somewhere else. And, of course, Paolo decides to bury his nesting doll in the toilet at the Pearl Station. Because, you know, that's a perfect hiding spot. Far away, underground, and he goes there all alone. He's never been there. And while he's there, in comes Ben and Juliet. And you get the best... Ben and Juliet. You get the best Ben and Juliet dialogue here because it's... They're like the villains explaining their dubious plan. Yeah. And Paolo's listening to this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And he never mentions it to anybody else. Yeah, he just, like, keeps this stuff to himself. They're the worst. Like, if they were really there this whole time, why didn't they share all this information? Like, stuff could have gotten solved so much sooner. Ben is talking about how he plans to infiltrate the castaways. They're mm -hmm. going to use Michael. They're going to use Jack. They're going to use them all. Um, Ben's really good at finding out what people are emotionally invested in. And he's good at exploiting it. Yeah, because that's not creepy. No. And Jack is a nice guy. I feel like if Ben just came up to Jack right off the bat and was like, you know what, I'm dying. I just need you to be my surgeon. Can you cure me? I feel like Jack would do it. Yeah, Jack probably didn't need to be kidnapped or and tricked into helping Ben. Yeah, so they, they go by, they steal Walt. <laughs> Poor Walt. Ben exploits Michael. Michael yes. kills uh, the... Anna Lucia uh, and Libby. Anna Lucia. Poor Libby. The, all this crazy shit happens. And all Ben really had to do was just come in and be like, hey, I'm dying. Can you get rid of this tumor in my spine or whatever? Yeah. The They're like just hearing this plan in this one scene. You just realize how ridiculous the show can be. Yes, it really is. Like That's kind of what I love about this episode is it shows how stupid everything is how convoluted paulo also steals the walkie-talkie here yes and was there any real significance to him taking the walkie-talkie i think it was just supposed to like make the the guys at the beach freak out a little bit just to kind of add some suspense to it oh well, yeah i guess yeah. at that point in time we really didn't know we what still was didn't really on. understand what the others wanted we didn't understand who the others were we had an idea but not fully yeah, we we had like this just little breadcrumb of who they were. And the trail's getting a little bit bigger, but it's branching off into different directions. Yeah. And because all the stuff is going on, Hurley decides to go to see Desmond, the local superpowered psychic. Yeah, because, you know, Desmond sees all, knows all, all of a sudden after he got like shot out of the um, hatch. 
Out of the, the main hatch. I call it the main hatch. The main hatch. So Desmond gets these flashes before his eyes, and Hurley thinks that maybe he knows something about what Nikki and Paula were up to, mm-hmm. but he has no control over his superpowers. However, he did see Sawyer argue with Nikki. Yes, because Nikki just wanted a gun, and she was angry, and Sawyer's like, I'm not giving you one. Who are you? Hurley doesn't know that backstory, so he's now suspicious of Sawyer because Sawyer's been saying who is Nikki throughout this whole episode, but they apparently yeah. have a history. Yeah, but it was like from this morning. <laughs> and Sawyer still doesn't know who the hell this woman is. We get our Vincent cameo. Vincent the dog. Vincent! I love Vincent. Aww. So they decide to cover up uh, Nikki and Paolo's bodies with a blanket. Mm-hmm. And Vincent comes and he takes the blanket off. <laughs> Because that's what Vincent does. I think Vincent knew they were still alive and he was trying yeah. to hint to the gang without speaking that, hey, these people are alive. Don't bury them. Their body yeah. has just been slowed down to a really deep, perilous state. Yeah, they're just like, basically, they're alive, but it doesn't seem like they're alive. And sadly, the show never gave us a Vincent flashback. I would have loved a Vincent Oh my god, episode. that would have been amazing. Just something through Vincent's eyes. <laughs> like, this whole madness. There's this kid, there's this dad, there's all these crazy people. I really thought that for the series finale, I don't know, a part of me just believed that we were going to get the whole series explained through Vincent's eyes. (laughs) Oh god, that would have been so awesome. That would have been so much better than the ending that we actually got. (laughs) Locke is uh, leading the expedition to the Pearl Station because he wanted to use the computers there to see if they can find any hints as to... Where Jack may be. Yes. Jack and Sawyer and Kate. Nikki volunteers herself to go. Uh, because suddenly Nikki has to be involved in every freaking thing. This was the point in the series where they now started shoehorning Nikki and Paolo into these adventures. Yeah, they were suddenly part of the gang and were like, no, we don't want you to be part of our gang. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, there was a reason why Paolo went to the Pearl Station because that's where he hid the diamonds. Mm hmm. And instead of hiding them in the toilet, he now pretends he was pooping. Yeah. And he hides the diamonds in his underwear near his penis. Because perfectly. Because Nikki's not going to look there. No, because they have not been intimate probably in these like 80 something days. Yeah, probably. That's probably why they're so bitchy to each other. Yes. <laughs> and now we cut back to Sawyer. He shows up um, back to the other castaways on the burial ground because he just got back from his sweeping of the perimeter. Yeah. And Hurley is kind of like, hey, Sawyer, we know about you and Nikki fighting. And Sawyer is like, hey, you know, put throw down your torches. You know, Nikki just came to me earlier. She was looking for a gun. She had dirt under her nails. I just found a fresh amount of dirt and near Paula's body. And that's where the diamonds were. And he throws the diamonds at... I believe Sun. Sun yeah, he gives the diamonds. diamonds to Sun, and Sun's like, these are worthless here. These are worthless. He gives them back to Sawyer. This is where Sun slaps him across the face. Yeah. He slaps a sweaty, shirtless Sawyer across the face. Was he shirtless? I don't think he was shirtless. Uh, he was because he was digging. Oh, that's right. And I feel like it was probably in Josh Holloway's contract where he has to spend at least 10 minutes an episode shirtless. Yeah, probably. And we, we we are starting to wind down to the horrible demise of Nikki and Paolo. So we mm-hmm. talked to earlier that morning. Nikki and Paolo are on the beach. Nikki finally realizes that, you know what? Fuck the diamonds. Uh, we're probably stuck here forever. Yeah. Should probably just settle down with Paolo on the island. Just take... Make note, the best of it. Make the best of it. Take note of Rose and Bernard. You know, she just missed Thanksgiving. was probably like a few weeks before. She's not really sure because... Yeah. They're not even sure what date it was. And she's like, maybe not finding our suitcase was good for us. But Paulo gets up. He's like, you know what, sweetheart? I'm going to make some breakfast for you. And let's just have a romantic morning and get on with our lives. Yeah. But he makes a fatal mistake. He had the nicotine gum in his pocket. And she finds it. She finds it because it falls out of his pocket. And she's like, that fucking asshole. And she is just done. She's done. 
She wants to get even with him. She doesn't want to kill him, but she has Arts' bugs in her in their tent. Mm-hmm. She remembers the Medusa spider, which the Medusa spider, it will bite you. You will be paralyzed for about seven or eight hours. Yeah. However, she does forget one important detail. It attracts all the male spiders. Yes, so the female spider has these pheromones, which attracts, like, every male spider around. Mm Mm-hmm. It could have been the smoke monster. I kind of think in a way it was the smoke monster weeding out the non-essential. Yeah. Crossing their names off the cave wall. We're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but there is a cave wall. Every character on the show has a number. And the non-important numbers would be somehow sacrificed to the island. I feel like the smoke monster decided that Nikki and Paolo were not worth it. Yes, they were like, okay, we're done. You two are too messy. And it manifested itself in the form of male Medusa spiders. Totally makes sense, actually. Bites Nikki after she uses the female one on Paolo. Nikki panics, uh, so she hides the diamonds in the fresh amount of dirt she digs a little hole throws them in there and she should have just kind of like laid where she was and just kind of waited out the eight hours instead she freaks out and she runs to the beach and collapses in front of hurley and sawyer they think she's dead they find paulo they think he's dead and we get hurley's infamous eulogy nikki and paulo i guess we didn't know you well and it appears you killed each other for diamonds and i really loved expose Hurley. I love Hurley. <laughs> and Sawyer says, rest in peace, Nikki. He finally says her name, <laughs> acknowledges her, drops the diamonds over her body. And just as they start burying... Start Nikki tossing Paula, the dirt on him. Nikki opens her eyes. It's too late. You're dead. We're burying Jeez. you alive now. Bye-bye, Nikki. Bye-bye, Paolo. They are buried alive. Boom. The lost signal comes up. And we're done. We are done with... I don't think we really ever think about Nikki or Paolo ever again. They are never mentioned again. Expose is mentioned. Expose comes up a few times, I believe. However, I kept thinking that Nikki and Paolo would come up again at some point because John Locke had that whole line where nothing ever stays buried that long. Uh Uh-huh. And then they were buried along the beach. Oh, yeah. Well, they were buried where everybody else got buried. But it was just the way that it was brought up yeah. in this episode, and then they were buried. I just thought they would come up again. I think the reason. fans were so happy that Nikki and Paolo were dead <laughs> that the creators were like, okay, we can't bring them back. No, I don't think they even came back at the fin- the final episode when nope. all the characters were reunited in the church. Yeah, they weren't. There was no Nikki and Paolo. The, I, I'm, I'm just guessing the actors and actresses were probably unavailable. Or they just weren't invited back. How did how did you feel about the episode? Um, it's it's not my favorite episode. It's not my least favorite episode. It's ridiculous, though. It is so over the top. I as I said, it's I would put this in my top ten lost episodes, and probably even like one of the greatest hours of television. <laughs> really? There there's so much going on there. You could probably have a non lost fan watch this episode. Yeah. And they would be able to very easily get involved in this world. Yeah, I think if you were going to have somebody pick up Lost in the middle of the series, this is the episode you give them. Yes, Because, because you get a does. little bit of background, but it's not like so much background where you're like, oh my god, this is too much. It's not in your face, but you get the main points. You pretty much see every character shows up in either a flashback or they bump into people on the island. Even Jack and Kate, who are off-island or somewhere else at this point in time. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is what I tweeted the other night after I watched it. I was like, this episode is so ridiculous. Like, let's just insert these fools into old scenes. (laughs) Any other final thoughts? Uh, The actress who played Nikki, Uh Keely Sanchez, she went on to marry... Uh, Zach Guilford, who played Matt Saracen on Friday Night Lights. Oh, really? I believe they are still married. Okay. And she has appeared in a few things here and there. Um, I think she was she had a television series. Yeah, it was called Married to the Kellys with Breck and Meyer. Okay, I've I've actually like watched that. 
it was about this like New York City guy who um, marries this girl and they move to Kansas to be near her family. And her family's like just this wholesome, like always spending time together kind of family. And he just like just wants to be able to like hang out at his house and watch a movie without being interrupted. But it's like they always have to go over to her parents for dinner or something. Oh, I see. All right. So should we uh, discuss what we are going to be hopping into in our next uh, world? Yeah. What are we doing next? Our next episode is going to be a series that you had insisted that we do. <laughs> I, I know very little of this show. However, it was a mid-season replacement. It was short-lived. It only had <laughs> one season. It aired on ABC. It involved 10 strangers <laughs> who came together in one night. No, it's not the real world. It is a show that many people do not know called Mixology. Yes, Mixology. It's a wonderful show. You, you just have to watch more than just one episode. And it used to be on Netflix. However, you can now find it on iTunes for a low cost or YouTube. There are some shoddy copies available on YouTube. Yeah. So definitely join us next week when we watch Mixology. Bye.